Welcome to the Korean Atlas and History. Each episode, we will take you on an exploration through some aspect of Korean culture, the landscape, the history, and more. Today, on the Korean Atlas and History, Korean Dialects, Jeju. <laughs> the dialect of Jeju comes from Jeju Island, a small province off of the southern shore of South Korea. The dialect is known as a language of its own, as it differs greatly from the Korean spoken on mainland Korea. Due to mass media, the dialect or language of Jeju is fading away, and now it is spoken mainly by the older residents of the island. The number of active speakers is around 10,000. Starting in 2014, the Jeju National University Foreign Language Institute has made efforts to save the language. According to the UNESCO Atlas of the World's Endangered Languages, the language of Jeju is critically endangered. Only 5 to 10,000 people speak it actively, all of whom are above 70 years of age. The language may be extinct in 20 to 40 years. Koreans have four main names for the language of Jeju. Jeju Bangon, Jeju Satiri, Jeju A, and Jeju Mai, all of which can be translated into either Jeju dialect or Jeju language. The Korean people consider the language of Jeju a dialect, as it is a province of South Korea. However, linguists consider it to be a separate language, as it is mutually unintelligible with mainland Korean dialects. The Jeju language also incorporates some Japanese and Mongolian into their language, further separating it from mainland Korean. The origins of the language of Jeju is unknown, and it's hard to say where it originated. It is known that in ancient times the island of Jeju was ruled by the Tamla Kingdom and had little to no contact with mainland Korea. Yet, as the kingdoms of Baekje, Silla, and Goryeo rose, Tamra took on tributary relationships with them. The languages of these kingdoms in Tamla were quite distinct, but around this time, some synthesis began to occur. From 1231, the Korean peninsula was frequently invaded by the Mongolian Empire. During the Sambyolcho Rebellion, from 1270 to 1273, the island lay contested between the Mongols and Gaudia, and from this time until 1294, the Mongols directly controlled the Tamra kingdom. From then until 1404, it maintained local autonomy, until King Taejong of the Joseon dynasty placed Jeju under firm control and brought Tamra to an end. During this time of Mongolian influence and control, the Mongolian language strongly influenced the language of Jeju. During the Joseon dynasty, there were not many records from the island, but a few sources mention the language as being very different. During World War II, the U.S. military used Navajo to prevent the Japanese from understanding communications and a similar tactic was used during the 1951 Battle of Do Sol San, in which Jeju speakers were used to prevent eavesdropping. Sadly, one of the main reasons that Jeju youths today are not using the language is in order to prevent discrimination. For a considerable amount of time, teachers and students were prevented from using the Jeju language in the classroom. In the past, mass media has used the dialects of Yangnam, Hunan, and Chungcheong as comedic dialects. 
The language of Jeju has been widely forgotten in this sense until the present, as it's now being used in the media, usually for comedic purposes. The language itself is characterized by a heavy accent containing many informal words and phrases considered to be Korean slang. The language still survives in diasporic enclaves in Japan. Efforts have been made to revitalize the language, including a Jeju to Korean dictionary and the establishment of the Jeju Developmental Institute. Yet progress has been slow due to an ever widening generation and culture gap between youths and the main bulk of the speakers. The phonetic properties of the Jeju language are similar to those in the Seoul dialect. The main difference lies in the Jeju vowel system and other components of grammar. Jeju maintains the A RE A vowel, which has been lost from standard Korean. One notable difference between mainland Korea and the Jeju language is that Jeju lacks the honorific form. For example, a young speaker of the Gyeonggi dialect might say, Bangap Simnida, or Pleasure to meet you, to an older person. Yet a speaker of Jeju would say, Bangap Suda, which is roughly the equivalent of Howdy, or Nice to meet ya. In mainland dialects, this would be considered very inappropriate. Thus, Jeju has been dubbed inferior to the mainland dialects due to its casual tone and lack of formal morphemes at the end of verbs. The Jeju language has also preserved many words that have been lost over time in mainland Korean and borrow words that are not found in standard Korean. Some examples of these words include abang for father as compared to mainland aboji, omong for mother as compared to mainland omoni, and gonengi for cat as compared to mainland goyangi. The usage of many words is different as well. The word samchun takes its reference from the mainland word samchon, yet the word samchun on Jeju refers to all middle-aged men and women. On mainland Korea, the word samchon refers only to one's uncle. The word debi refers to the word sok. The mainland word for sok is yangmai. The Jeju variant comes from the Japanese tabi, which means traditional Japanese socks. For a short list of these words and differences, check out wikipedia.com. In addition to these word differences, the Jeju language also contains four forms of the locative case marker. In mainland Korea, only the form a exists, but Jeju has a, le, e, and t. The Jeju language also has some profanity that is only found on the island. Mainland Koreans often misunderstand the profanity and find it comedic. The language of Jeju is found in notable media today, including television and dramas. The singer Hyeon was famous in the 1970s for a hit song sang in the Jeju language. The drama Tam Nanin Doda carefully portrayed the language of Jeju. The drama In Sengun Adam Dawa has Jeju as its background, so the language can often be heard in the show. Of course, the programs that air from Jeju itself frequently use the language. Residents of Jeju who speak some of the language or remember parts from their past are currently being encouraged to write down what they remember. Even if what they write down is just in a corner of the internet somewhere, if you speak any of the language, please write it down. If it disappears with you, it is truly gone. We hope you have enjoyed the Korean Atlas and History. Much of our information 
has been obtained through the Namu Wiki and Wikipedia. If you want to learn more or study the Korean names of these places, check out our Memrise tool. If you wish to download all the episodes of this podcast, want more information, or want transcripts of this podcast, visit us at www.koreanatlasandhistory.com. If you wish to send us an email, you can email us at koreanatlasandhistory at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.